Do we know how much we've generated uh, so far? Most of the clothes are selling out either that night or by morning the next day. Um, I just read on Twitter today that the H&M website crashed last night from one dress. Um, so people are responding, are responding to it. Um, this is a new concept and um, you know, people are really loving it. It's in the millions. I mean, I know we had surpassed a few million dollars in purchases, and those are retail dollars, so if the clothes are selling out, we know we've already surpassed a few million dollars in sales so far, which is exciting, you know, when you really think about it. And I think that everybody in the show, the first season, really didn't know how that was going to go. They really weren't sure. I don't think the buyers even know how to react. How do you plan for the, being the first of a kind yeah. to really understand, are they really going to shop online? Are they really going to come in the stores? John, I mean, the first time we spoke, uh, I probably was the only one in the room that knew your name, but didn't know what you had done. All right, since then I've done my own work. All right, and, and and from you know Ralph Lauren to Perry Ellis to wherever you've gone, was it always the intention to put your own brand name on something, or or, or is it just an adjunct of of the longer you're in the business, the more of a commodity you become. You know, I, I think that there always had to be probably something in the back of my head that I wanted to do something on my own, but it was never a driving force uh, for me. It just, it happened and the switch flipped this one day and I said, and I did mine a little bit later in life than some people do because I started, I didn't even go to design school until I was 29. So part of it is really that day that switch flipped, I knew I was going to go after it and if I won. I was going to go to win big, and if I didn't, it, you, you know, it's just like these designers on the show. When when you ask us if um, you know when they don't listen to us or whatever, it's like if you're not passionate, if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't, you know, if you don't, if you don't think you have something new to say, you shouldn't be doing it. And that was one thing that when I left Ralph Lauren, you know, he after a long period of trying trying to figure out if I, if I could he would even let me leave was really if you have something really new to say that's the only way you should do this and that's how I look at the designers saying you know if you don't agree with me because I'm not the buyer and I'm not the one that, that you're trying to sell here then you really have to believe that the consumer and everybody's going to think that you have something new to say here and something that they really want not just something that is a fantasy to you but something that you want that what they want this kind of goes for both of you but have you both exceeded your own dreams uh, exceeded? No, you know, I, <laughs> I, um, first of all, every day is a blessing, you know, um, no, no one, it, you don't get promised that you're going to be able to do what you love and get paid for it. So, um, you know, it, it's something that I'm very thankful for and that I don't take for granted for one second. I kind of pinch myself a lot of days that I get to really, I love what I do and it's, it's hard every day though. The world out there is hard and you got to fight every day. Uh, but I feel I feel very lucky that I get to do and I get to do you know I've, I've been able to m mix both fashion and, and music together and are, which are both my big passions and I'm like I pinch myself and I you know I say like how lucky of a guy am I to have this happen so if I did nothing further with my brand I'd be thrilled with where my where my life has taken me. Two things, Nicole. Um, last night you told one of the contestants, "quote It's important to reinvent yourself." Mm -hmm. I think. It's obvious that you have been doing that with your life. And what's your next uh, angle? And then I have another question. I was actually talking about it from a brand standpoint. And uh, you know what I was saying is that you do have to always be creating something that no one else has. And that's hard, you know? But l like John, you know that the John Barbados white t-shirt is his because it has his signature. And there's something that I can't put into words just something that he has that he's put into something as simple as a white t-shirt where you know that it's his and people go and they buy that t-shirt because they want to be a part of his overall world. And that's what I was saying to these designers is that you know you can create a leather jacket or a skirt, shorts, pants, I mean there's only a certain amount of things that you can make but you have to make it yours and you have to make it new and it's a fight, it's a constant fight to stay that brand that everybody wants to be a part of. The yeah, other thing is, I do want to. I do want to ask, and I know this is off, but you just were told that this is the end. Um, you grew up in the music world yes. because of your father. Do you have any comments to, about the death of Dick Clark? I don't have any comments right now. Can I? Wait, can, I can you talk about the white T-shirt? <laughs> making that your own. I mean, 
You know, it's a, it, no matter what, it, it, whether it's women's wear, men, men's wear, men's wear is simpler than women's mm -hmm. wear. So whatever you do, whether it's the white t-shirt or the jean, it has to be in the cut, in the fabric, in the little details, in the finishing. Um, it all, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, you know what they say, it's like God is in the details. It's those little things in life that separate you. And especially if you're not a logo brand. I'm not a logo brand, so it's really about those little things and why someone says, oh, I only wear his white t-shirts because they're just the best. You know, that's your goal when you set out to do it, is to make it the best. Whether everybody perceives it that way or not is, is, is the, the judge at the end. But it, it, it is about, there's no reason to put your name, I feel there's no reason to put your name on any product unless you feel it's the best that's out there. Mm -hmm. At what point did you, both of you, discover that you had more than a passion for just making clothes or wearing clothes, but you had a passion for those little details, you had a passion for fashion, for lack of a better phrase. <laughs> You know, I, I look back now, and like I said, I didn't. I didn't go to design school. I was. I, I, I graduated with a degree in education from university, and I went back at 29 years old to study design. But I, when I look back now, there's there's points along the way. I, I didn't know them at the time, but there's points along the way that you know. I, I used to take pictures. I used to carry a 35 millimeter uh, camera around my neck all the way through college and afterwards, and I used to take pictures of thousands of people all the time. And what I was taking pictures was the details. I wasn't taken just because they were interesting people, but it was the jacket, the pant, the scarf, the you know whatever it was, and somehow subliminally, not even knowing that I wanted to be a designer at that point in time, those were things that were affecting the way I think going forward. Nicole, for you, um, you know, I'm a big vintage shopper, and I was finding a void in the marketplace with more department stores, thinking, well, why, why can't I find this one? piece that I'm looking for, you know, why can't I find this bed jacket, or why can't I find just kind of a kimono style, just something to, you know, something that's going to stand out that's not necessarily a strong blazer or a leather jacket, why, you know, just constantly going to vintage stores um, and taking pieces and then redoing them at home and making them my own. Um, and then I thought, well, if I'm looking for this, maybe maybe somebody else is as, as, as well. Nicole, how... how excited are you for your dad and uh, I mean it's like he has found yet another audience. Yeah. You know this is his first, there's many layers to this <coughs> answer, um, this is his first number one album since 1986. Um, I was five years old at the time, I love my dad of course, did I care about the music? Not really. Um, so to watch him, I just went to Las Vegas with him last week for his special and to watch him now that I'm 30 years old and I can really appreciate it and watch these amazing iconic country singers come in and take his song and make it their own as well is something that was so moving and I was so proud, more proud of him than I've ever been in my entire life. Um, and then when we decided that I was going to take the stage with him last minute, that was something that, that I've never done before in front of people. My dad and I have been playing piano together forever since I was little, but definitely not in front of, any, of anybody, and um, it's very, it's very nice.